Winds of change in the Arab world. A third day of protests in Egypt. A prominent dissident says that he's ready to take power if that's what the people want. The government continues its crackdown on protesters. Another country is inspired by Tunisia's popular uprising. Thousands demonstrate in Yemen. They shout down with the president. And no one will rob us of our revolution. Protesters in Tunisia are camping outside the Prime Minister's office for a fifth day, calling for members of the Ancien Regime to get out of the government. Those are the headlines. Hello and thanks for joining us here on France 24. Well, first, inspired by the popular revolt in Tunisia, Egypt continues its largest protests in a generation. The time has come for President Mubarak to leave power. Those are the words of prominent Egyptian dissident and Nobel laureate Mohamed El Baradai. He is on his way back home to Cairo. Well, he says that he wants a role in pushing for reform. Now, anti-government activists are planning another huge rally. In in the capital, at least four people have died since the protests began. The government is fighting back against the demonstrators. Egypt's general prosecutor has charged 40 people for trying to overthrow the regime. At least a thousand protesters have been arrested. An Egyptian government building in Suez torched. In another area of the city, protesters tried to set on fire an office of the ruling party. Groups of demonstrators, both here and in Cairo, defied authorities through the night and on to Thursday morning. On Wednesday, thousands of anti-government demonstrators gathered in major cities. Some threw firebombs and rocks on police, which replied by firing rubber bullets and tear gas at the crowd and by beating protesters. Hundreds were arrested. I'm a lawyer, but here in Egypt there is no justice. Look at my face. As long as there is no justice, the country is going down. And in the end, Hosni Mubarak as well, and all the people who are with him. Finally, he'll end up like Ben Ali in Tunisia. Thousands of Egyptians who took to the streets were inspired by the Tunisian uprising. The wave of protest is unprecedented. They called to overthrow Hosni Mubarak, president for nearly 30 years, and for a solution to the problems of high unemployment, corruption and poverty. I think it'll keep on going. Those groups calling for demonstrations aren't going to disappear overnight. They are large groups, and what happened yesterday will bring more people to their cause and encourage greater protests in the future. Nearly half of all Egyptians live below or just over the poverty line. These conditions have fueled the anger which has boiled over in towns and cities across the country. And the domino effect in Yemen. Tens of thousands of people are demonstrating in the capital, Sana'a. Well, crowds have blocked off streets in four parts of the capital and are shouting down with Ali Abdullah Saleh, who, like Mubarak, has been president for more than 30 years. Well, just like in Tunisia and in Egypt, Yemeni demonstrators are calling for economic reforms and an end to corruption. Well, Yemen is the Arab world's poorest country. It has a separatist movement in the south and a rebel uprising in the north. There are also fears it's becoming a safe haven for Al-Qaeda. With so many young people out of work, it's fertile picking ground for recruits. And Tunisian protesters say that they won't let Ben Ali's cronies rob them of their revolution. They are rallying for a fifth day outside the Prime Minister's office in Tunis. The promised cabinet reshuffle still hasn't taken place, and unless it clears out to all members of the old regime, protesters aren't going to buy it, they say. Well, meanwhile, thousands have taken to the streets of Sidi Bouzid, the birthplace of the revolution. They've ousted their main man, but Tunisian demonstrators have no intention of ending it there. Here, protests in front of the Prime Minister's office. Mohamed Hanouchi served under Ben Ali, and for these men, that's enough of a reason to bring him down. We will remain here until we get what we want. Now, talk of a council of wise men to guide Tunisia through the crisis. A former opposition politician is expected to head the group, and he says Hanouchi may serve a purpose in the interim government. <laughs> There's no doubt that his recent past doesn't allow society to have full faith in him. But we need him to help us make a civilized transition from a dictatorship to what we want. 
he might have a tough time convincing demonstrators. They're vowing to continue their revolution until the entire old guard has fallen. While the caretaker government includes some former opposition leaders, many top posts, including Foreign Affairs, Defence and the Interior Ministry, were retained by Ben Ali cronies. Sources say a cabinet revamp, expected to be announced on Thursday, could see these positions replaced. People are insisting on government more than they are insisting on a president. If it does well, it will be re-elected. If it doesn't do well, it's ousted. And this is exactly what these young people are putting in place in this real democracy. The Prime Minister has said he will quit in the shortest possible time frame and promise to hold elections within six months. Uh, moving on to other world news worries in South Africa over Nelson Mandela.